So, okay, uh, this question says, suppose you wish to produce a magnetic field in a toroid. Okay, let me just uh, start sketching things to make sure I have a right mental image of the thing. Um, so, I have a toroid. Um, let me just imagine a toroid of uh, rectangular cross-section. The actual cross-section actually doesn't matter for a toroid, but I find the rectangular ones easier to draw. So uh, what we mean by toroid is not this donut thing. It's actually the wires that go around the donut. So the toroid part would be the wires drawn like this that kind of goes around and uh, um, sorry, it gets a little, comp uh, you have to imagine me drawing this all the way around. That's the toroid. Um, so we are trying to produce a magnetic field inside the toroid. Okay. Um, and I have a feeling they are trying to build a toroid with, um, so, so they are looking for the magnetic field kind of at the mean radius, because uh, that's the only way question would make sense. So we are given some kind of radius R that out at which we are trying to measure the magnetic field. Um, and there's, oh, magnetic susceptibility. I don't think I have memorized how to factor this into um, my formula. If I had to take a guess, it would be that effective magnetic constant is the susceptibility times the permeability of free space, but I could be wrong. So I'll look in the textbook and make sure. <laughs> um, so in the hint, I'm pretty sure in magnetism in matter, oh, oh I guess, okay, it's referring me only to that. But I'm also going to look up on my own the section 12.6 for the formula for the magnetic field in a toroid. So let's just start with this just to verify if this is actually correct. It might not be. So magnetism matter, reading down, uh, paramagnetic and so on. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So. It's not this, but there's one plus. Yeah, in fact, okay, that. So I should use that expression, not my incorrect one. One plus that. Um, or, or what, I think this, this is what someone might call relative permeability in analogy with the, what we do with the relative permittivity. But in any case, so this will allow you to use um, the formula that uh, in the, in the previous section for toroid. So when you, um, so, and I also did this derivation in lecture, but if you don't have that, then you can also find it in the textbook. They do the derivation using Ampere's law. It's pretty fun. Um, if I wasn't running short on time, I would do it. <laughs> when you finish that derivation, this is the um, uh, magnetic field within the toroid uh, with R being the distance from the center of the toroid to the point. So magnetic field inside the toroid is not constant, unlike a uh, solenoid. So let me copy it over that formula. The magnetic field of toroid is equal to mu naught times n i, where n is the total number of turns. Uh, divide by 2 pi r. And for this question, I'll just stick with this because um, for this expression to make easy sense, I, I'm just going to abandon use of the Coulomb constant and speed of light for this question. <laughs> um, some unusual uh, constant coefficient choices just make you th think more, which sometimes can be good, but here I, I want to think less. <laughs> so, um, okay, I have the formulas I need. Let uh, um, so let's make the modification with uh, this uh, material. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a slight modification to this formula, where it has permeability of free space. I'm going to use permeability of material, permeability of the iron core. So and the permeability of that iron core would be given by this. So with this modification, if I'm writing it back in terms of the permeability of free space, then it would look like um, one plus the susceptibility times permeability of free space times n times i divided by two pi r. And I think we are given everything. 
we are given the total number of turns, we are given the radius, and list where we would measure it, and the permeability. Okay, so what current is required? Oh, so I have to solve this for current. Let's do that. I'm gonna do the algebra in my head. It, it just move, moves all everything over reciprocally. So current is 2 pi r times the magnetic field inside a toroid divided by 1 plus chi times mu naught times n. Uh, let's plug in the numbers and um, get the numerical value. 2 times pi times r times magnetic field inside a toroid. 1.2 tesla. Wow, that's a large. Oh, wait. Radius is uh, 15 centimeters times um, 1.2 tesla divided by. And what will help is actually this large uh, magnetic susceptibility. 1 plus. Oh, I could even ignore the 1. 4.5 times 10 to the power of 3. No units. Uh, let me make sure I have a big parenthesis around that. Um, times the magnetic constant. Uh, I do prefer this name over permeability of free space, which can be hard to spell. And, you know, magnetic constant times and 550 turns. Turns is not a unit. I don't have to write it. Okay. In fact, I think if I write it, it might confuse Wolfram Alpha. I haven't tried this. I don't know if it will actually confuse it. Um, okay, that looks right. So current is 0 0.364 ampere. Yeah, not that large. Um, so this uh, large magnetic susceptibility is giving a huge boost. And it's, this is really useful when you are building inductors. So that's why we'll be using toroidal uh, ferromagnetic core. Oh, let me plug it in to make sure it's actually right. Good. Um, or at least, uh, you know, the system thinks it's right. And the thing is, I think if I forgot that one, I would have gotten functionally identical answer. Like if I didn't have that one, then it would have given me, uh, yeah, functionally identical answer. So it would have matter if we had a diamagnetic material or paramagnetic material where that uh, one could matter. So, okay, for comparison, what current is required to produce the same magnetic field? Yeah, air field of toroid of same geometry. So, uh, so that would be where I get rid of this uh, modification that comes from the ferromagnetic material. Then you get the currents that are in thousands of uh, ampere, 1640 ampere. I don't think I know um, any experimental device that can produce that much current. I'm sure someone can build a special purpose device that can do that, but um, like your home appliances are not producing that much current. Like if you had uh, uh, that much current even at one volt difference, it's uh, using up same energy as your microwave running. It's, this is a huge amount of current. Um, so, so yeah, that's the question. Um, it, uh, um, if you look up the formula for toroid, then it's pretty simple, easy. Uh, it's gonna, I guess, uh, um, this is a challenge to me as an instructor because I really do want you to um, learn how to use Ampere's law and Gauss's law. That's actually the fun part of um, physics and electromagnetism. Um, but uh, at this lower division level, it's actually easy to get through a lot of material by just looking at formulas. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, in timed assessments, some of the questions you will see will uh, force you to actually apply Ampere's law, either by giving you some material with unusual uh, change of density so that pre-made formulas don't work. Um, but at the same time, uh, the utility of that, except for those of you who might go into theoretical physics, is limited. So I, I think as long as you take care to make sure that you understand the formulas you're using, fundamentally, I don't have objection to that. Um, just make sure you spend enough time to make sure you know what all the variables mean.